The word of the Lord says in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17, let the elders that rule be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and in doctrine. We are to hold these men of God who labor in the word of God, who serve us in the word of God with honor, especially those who labor in doctrine and word. And we thank God that, that uh, we, we have an, a very honored guest today. Uh, I believe a, a lead pastor of a church, Open Arms, Open Arms Church of Jesus Christ, a friend of Pastor David's for 10 years. Thank God. And, and as, as he comes up to the front, can we just stand up and just give him some honor and give thanks to God and praise for this man's life, taking his time out of a busy schedule to serve us in the word, preparing a message, seeking after God. Amen. And, and he brought some talented musicians. Praise and thank God as well. Them coming out and serving us, serving our church. We thank you. Amen. 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 Lord God, um, thank you for this man of God who you have allowed to serve us, Lord, in bringing us your word, in bringing us your message, Lord God. The time and study that, that he has taken in meditation and prayer, Lord God, for us, God. We thank you for this man, Lord. We thank you so much for his ministry. We thank you for his calling, God. Lord, I pray that you would speak through him, Lord, to us today, God, that this would be your words, God, to our hearts as the apostle prayer, Paul, pray, Lord, that the word would be glorified today, Lord God. It would have free course through him, Lord. Thank you for Daniel, Lord. Thank you for his life. Thank you for everyone he brought here. Lord, to serve us, Lord. We're honored, Lord, and we're thankful to you, Jesus. To your name be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Just a servant. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this house. Come on, somebody. It's all about Jesus. It's all about our King. He's the King of Kings. He's the ruler over every ruler. He's Almighty God. I wish I had some believers up in this house that would open up your mouth and give God a high praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Glory be to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He is the one that we have to honor today. He is the one that we honor in this house. I give God thanks for his grace, his mercy, for his presence in this church. Amen. It's so good to see the saints of God. Amen. The last time I was here, amen. Uh, it was a small flock. You guys were located somewhere else. And I'm so blessed to see how God has brought in great men and women of God to come and give Him praise, to serve Him. Amen. What an honor. What an honor. What an honor. Glory be to God. Amen. Uh, we come from Pickering. And uh, amen. I've known Pastor David Lynn for a number of years. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Amen. But we come from Pickering to be here with you all today. And it is nothing short of a privilege and honor to be able to serve on this side of the vineyard. Amen, somebody? Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I want to take a quick second and just greet all of the ministers in this house. Every evangelist, every pastor. Amen. I'm going to say Pastor Luke because I see it in his future. Amen. I see it in his future. Amen. Amen. Every evangelist, every apostle, amen, every teacher, every prophet, amen, I pray, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. We come with some of our people from Open Arms, amen. Somebody give God thanks for them. And I also, amen, want to greet, amen, this woman who I carry like a credit card. I never leave home without her. 
Amen. She's my backbone. She's my best friend. She's my lover. She's my queen. Amen. Somebody give God praise for Lady Winter. Amen. And I thank God for the young ministers that came with me. Minister Junior Brown. Amen. Minister Deshaun on the drums. Minister SJ. Amen. He's our praise and worship leader at our church. Amen. So God bless you for coming today. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated in this house. Amen. Is it possible to get these monitors up a little bit? Just a little tiny bit. Amen. If the sound team can help me out here and just give me a little volume right here. Up here. Amen. Uh, we came, I forgot what it's like to drive downtown and traffic was something else, man. The enemy did not want me to come here today. I could tell you that right now. Last night we had a deliverance session that took us into the morning hours. Amen. We had a demonic situation where we had to pray. And how many know that you don't have to always be right there, but you can actually speak that word and reach that person where they're at. Amen. This person called us by phone and we was able to, amen, pray and cast out devils over the phone line. Amen. It's not our might or our strength, but it's by the spirit of God. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, I believe God gave me a word for you. Amen. Uh, I've known Pastor David Lynn for years. Uh, back in the day, he had a church in Whitby. And he would teach and preach from his basement in his house. And my son told me about this pastor. I wasn't saved back then. I could care less about a pastor back then. But he said, Dad, I'm a drummer at the church. I said, you a drummer at the church? Which church made you their drummer? Because I know that boy can't play the drums. And so he said, Dad, I'm a drummer at this church. I said, really? Let me meet this pastor and tell him how crazy he must be. Amen. Uh, my son, amen, he, he passed away since then. And uh, this uh, really, when you lose a loved one, and some of you can relate in this room, you begin to reflect backwards and think about, amen, the memories and the, you begin to connect dots of, of individuals who was there. And so Pastor Lynn, amen, was a person that I really appreciate for introducing my son to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when somebody passes away and they pass away in Christ, it's a different feeling. It's not the same grief. Of course, we're sad that we'll never see them again. However, there's a hope within us because we know, amen, that death is just the doorway to something more marvelous. I wish I had a witness up in this house. <laughs> Glory be to God. Now, we, we generally like to make a lot of noise in our church, and I thank God that y'all love to make noise too. Amen. I like a church that talks back. Amen. I like a church that shouts amen. And if you'll help me out, you'll make me feel at home here. Amen, somebody? Now, one thing that we do, amen, I'm going to get into this word, is we like to, amen, give God a praise, which we've done that. And we also like to greet one another. So do me a favor, make me feel at home, and turn to your neighbor and just say, I'm really glad you're here. So glad you're here. So glad you're here. Of course, I'm glad you're here. Come on, tell somebody else. That person knows you already. Tell, find somebody you don't know and say, I'm really, really glad that you're here. Amen. Go ahead and find someone you've never met before and say, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so happy that you're here. Glory be to God Almighty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Glory be to God. And so, last but not least, I'd like to greet the shepherd of this house in his absence. Amen. He's a man that my mom loves more than me. She does. I said, Mom, you love Pastor David more than me? She's like, mm-hmm. I said, so, okay. So he's like my brother. Amen. I, I love him dearly, and I give God thanks for his life, and I greet him now in his absence. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, it's all about Jesus. And I could stop right there and go home. It's all about Christ. Amen, somebody? It's never about me. It's never about you. But it's about Jesus Christ. Amen. They call me Apostle Daniel. I don't care what you call me. Just don't call me stupid. Amen. 
you know, people get hung up over, are there apostles? Are there prophets? Of course there are. There has to be those things. If you read in Ephesians, amen, chapter 4, it says that Christ gave gifts to the church. He gave the apostles. He gave the prophets. He gave the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists. These were all characteristics of Jesus. Jesus is the great apostle. Jesus is the great prophet. Jesus is the great evangelist. Jesus was the great teacher. Jesus was all of the above. So the body of Christ must have every characteristic of Jesus Christ. Now it's the Holy Ghost that decides who gets placed under what umbrella. And so some of you may very well be apostles. You may be the ones who maintain the foundation of Jesus Christ, who make sure that the church does not deviate from Jesus Christ. Some of you are prophets. Some of you dream dreams and see visions. And some of you hear from the Holy Ghost. Even now you're being raised as prophets, but every characteristic of Jesus Jesus Christ must be in the body of Christ. I believe that Pastor David Lynn is an apostle. He hasn't accepted it yet, but I told him you're an apostle because you're somebody who maintains the foundation of Jesus Christ. The word apostle means messenger. It's not that Jesus, we had to be alive. He chose us. Amen. It's that the Holy Spirit says, that's how I want you to function. I wish I had a witness up in here. And so we don't get caught up over titles. Amen. Because we know that we're just unworthy servants that are chosen to serve an almighty God. I wish somebody would give God a praise. Amen. Now, in Open Arms Church of Jesus Christ, we will, I will not preach until the Holy Ghost give me a word. And I drove here with no word. Amen. It's pretty scary when you depend on God that way. I've actually come to church and said, saints, I don't have a word. And amen. We praise and worship until the Spirit of God gave me a word. Amen, somebody? So I've been praying, I've been asking God, I've been saying, Lord, you got to give me a word. Don't send me the CFM, but no word. Amen. And I believe he gave me a word for you. Amen. So somebody, this will be for you. I don't know who, but I want you to turn your Bibles, if you have it with you, amen, to Hebrews chapter eight. Amen. We're just going to read a, a couple of verses, Hebrews chapter eight. Amen. And I don't know if you put it on the projector or not, but if you have it, please say amen. Amen. Two people have it. I'll wait. Amen. Hebrews 8. We're going to read from the first verse. Amen. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Okay. Amen. I'm going to read it in your hearing. I'm reading from a version called the King James. Now, I want to just say this real quick. I don't fuss over versions. Amen. To me, the best translation is the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the versions have some flaw in it somewhere. And so I depend on the Holy Spirit. So I go between versions, although I do appreciate the King James and I do believe it's very good, but I also am led by the Holy Ghost. Amen, somebody? What it says here in Hebrews chapter eight, it says, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. Somebody say true tabernacle. Which the Lord pitched and not man for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Somebody say shadow. Shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, God said, Moses, see that thou make all things according to the pattern to thee in the mount. I'm just going to read that again real quick in the NLT just for ease of understanding because not everybody understands, yea, yo, thou art. 
Amen, somebody? So let's just read that real quick from the first verse. Amen. It says, here's the main point. We have a high priest who sat down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. And since every high priest is required to offer gifts and sacrifices, our high priest, Jesus Christ, must make an offering too. If he were on earth, he would not even be a priest, since there already are priests who offer the gifts required by the law. They serve in a system of worship that is only a copy and a shadow. Somebody say copy and shadow. Amen. It is only a copy and a shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Heavenly Father, let this word reach who it need to reach. Any heart that be open, Lord God, fill it with your revelation knowledge. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this house. Let it rain, O oh God, with answers, healings, breakthroughs, signs, wonders. Move as you see fit in this house, Lord God. We give you free reign. Holy Ghost, we pray all of this in no other name. Lord God, reduce me and help them to hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Saints of God, the world, as you know, is a crazy place. You ought to know by now, if you have the Holy Ghost, you ought to know by now that evil is raising up like never before. I don't watch television. My wife is my witness. We don't have cable, but we see excerpts of different things that are happening in this world. We see that how the devil is no longer hiding his evil, but he's bringing his evil out in plain sight. Nowadays, the devil used to be hidden and used to try to make people believe that he didn't exist. But society is so depraved and so decrepit with the things that people are doing and engaging in that now the enemy is bold enough to feel like I can just come out and show myself. I, I heard that, amen, when it came to the Grammys, the musical awards, they were flashing Satan right across the stage. I heard that they were wearing all kinds of colors and doing Doing all kinds of satanic rituals right in the face of the people and people are clapping their hands and people are cheering and people are dancing and gyrating to the evil that's being presented to them we're in a time saints of God where evil is being presented as good and those that stand for good are being presented as evil we're in a time saints of God where it's getting dark out here and we feel that the enemy is rising we feel that that the enemy's trying to snub out the church. I heard just the other day that in California, they're trying to eliminate the Bible. They're actually drawing up legislation that's designed to wipe out the Bible because nobody wants to be held accountable for their wicked ways. They want to do what they want to do. They want to live lawless and do whatever their flesh desires. I even heard that the Vatican, and I hope we got no Catholic folk in this house, but I even heard that the Vatican, amen, they're trying to rewrite the Bible because they said that the Bible is outdated. They said it's antiquated. They said it's archaic. They said nobody want to hear the things that happened in the Old Testament. They want to rub out the history of an almighty God. But I thank God as much as it's getting dark out here, I give God a praise because God said that we are to be the light of this world. And what that means, saints of God, is the darker it gets is the brighter the light will shine i wish i had a witness up in here ah the darker it gets is the more that we get to raise up the standard of jesus i wish i had a witness up in this house mm. and so we see now how wicked the world really was we used to trust in the systems of the world we used to trust in the medical system we used to trust in the food distribution system we used to trust in the government but now we're realizing especially after covid now we're realizing hold on a second we actually can't trust the government i'm not an insurrectionist but i love to tell the truth i realize that the government does not have our best interests 
interests in mind but these politicians have their best interests in mind they have their agendas in mind and whoever has the most money in society those are the ones that they're going to cater to so we have now governments telling us that we got to call people by different pronouns we got to call people things that we don't even agree with amen how am i going to call a man a woman when a woman is a woman and a man is a man they're trying to get us to do all kinds of things i wish i had a witness up in here they're trying to amen bend amen how we think and bend what we accept but i come to tell somebody in this house i will not bow i don't care how hot it gets out here but i will not bow i will take a stand i wish i had some folks that are willing to take a stand for jesus if i'm talking to somebody open up your mouth and give god a praise oh my god my god my god amen and so amen so i come to realize that we can't trust nothing out here even in the food you ever notice how big amen the vegetables are nowadays they're monster size anybody amen that is older than 40 you remember when you went to the grocery stores amen the green peppers were a small size and bananas were a smaller size now everything is grown big and it got no taste that's because they keep on injecting all kinds of uh, drugs and all kinds of things to make it grow prematurely everybody's doing what they want to do in the name of mammon Jesus said the love of money is the root of all evil so we find at the root of all of the problems that we're going through is the love of money people love money and they do what they do for money but I come to tell somebody those that are born again of God those that are born again of the Holy Spirit we don't need the world system we don't need to do what they do we are in a higher system we are born again in the spirit we don't succumb to the world patterns and the world systems but we have to tap into the system of God I wish I had a witness up in this church so we have to deviate from the systems of the world we cannot follow the patterns of the world because the world patterns are designed to keep you in bondage you ought to know by now and I'm sure Pastor Lynn has already told you but even the educational system is designed to keep you in bondage even the educational system they don't teach you how to invest your money they don't teach you about taxes they don't teach you about interest but they teach you and raise you how to be a slave because the elites have created an educational system that's the designed to keep you working and running on the rat reel and when you check out the world system the world system says that we're supposed to go and go to school and then go to college or go to university come out in debt find a job buy a house with a picket fence have a family but how many know that that cookie cutter life don't apply to the body of Christ how many know that God might want you to travel the world God might want you to go somewhere else God might I want you to do something else and I'm not knocking the educational system you need to know how to add but what I'm saying is you can't depend on the patterns of the world you have to learn how to depend on the patterns of God you can't be led by a government or a school system but you got to be led by the Holy Ghost I wish I had some Holy Ghost led people in this church that would just give God a praise I love to praise him somebody I love to praise him and so we read in the scripture here now that there are patterns, copies. In other words, God gave Moses and the Israelites a copy of something that was in heaven. That means that everything that Moses was supposed to do in the wilderness when they came out of Egypt, and Egypt was a type of the world system at that time, but Moses was acting as a type of Christ who's supposed to take the people of God and bring them out of the bondage of this world, bring them out of the slave system, and bring them into a 
a wilderness. In the wilderness now, Moses is supposed to, amen, lead the people to an understanding of Jesus. That is the wilderness system. If you understand what I'm saying, the pattern of coming out of Egypt into the wilderness and going to a promised land is the same pattern that every believer has to go through because we was once in the world, but then we came out the world and the same things that we used to do, we don't do it no more. The same people that we used to associate with, we don't associate with them anymore. The same places we used to go, we don't go there anymore. Suddenly, the same things we used to do, it feel like a wilderness because it don't feel good anymore because something has been changed in our mind. But in that wilderness period, we're supposed to get a revelation of Jesus because without a revelation, you can't function properly in the body of Christ. Without a revelation, you won't know how to be led by the Holy Ghost. You need to have a revelation of Jesus. I wish I had a witness up in this house. So Moses now brings them out into the wilderness and God is teaching them Christ. He's showing them patterns. He said, Moses, build a tabernacle, but make sure that you follow the God pattern. Make sure you don't do like what you saw in Egypt. I don't want to see a sphinx in there. I don't want to see no Aphrodite in there. I don't want to see no Ra or any gods of Egypt in there. I only want to see what come from the heavenly realm. I wonder if anybody see where I'm going. And so God said, Moses designed the tabernacle like this. He said, use red because red is symbolic of the blood of Jesus. He said, use blue because blue it represents the heavenly nature of Jesus. He said, use gold because gold represents the deity of Jesus. He said, use purple because purple represents the royalty of Jesus. He said, use bronze because bronze symbolizes the humanity of Jesus. Everything that Moses was supposed to do was a pattern that pointed back to Jesus Christ. I'm almost done somebody because I don't plan to preach too long. But if you understand what I'm saying, they had patterns that came from heaven and that means that we too must search for the patterns that point to Christ because so many people say that I'm saved but you're still out in the world so many people say that I'm saved but you're still doing what the world do you're still going with where, where the world goes you're still acting like how the world acts it's more than being saved I wish I had a witness because somebody came up with this false theology that said once saved always saved but if you're looking at the pattern you'll see for yourself that they came out of Egypt they were saved from bondage they were saved from Pharaoh they were brought into freedom but the elders still died I wonder if somebody see what I'm saying what I'm trying to tell you is that God was teaching us today by using them as an example God used the whole ancient realm to teach us that we got to look backwards and see the patterns to understand what has to happen in our salvation and so so the same way they came out of Egypt and they were free and they were no longer bound they were saved by God they came through the Red Sea but guess what somebody the elders still died they went to the promised land but they couldn't enter into the promised land because they saw giants in other words they made the problems bigger than God they saw the giants bigger than the God of the giants so they did not have the faith to enter into their promise what God is trying to tell us by taking those elders around in circles and I'm almost done somebody going around in circles is that your old nature got to die you can't enter into the promise of God until the old you die the old way that you think must die the old way that you deal with problems got to die the old way that you act got to die because the old nature will not enter the promises of God ah somebody in this house is going through a dying process someone in this house is learning how to die daily someone in this house is giving up anger someone in this house is giving up fear someone in this house is dying to doubt I wish I had some dead folk up in this house give God a praise so what I'm trying to say is if you read your Bible you're gonna see patterns in the Bible you're gonna realize that God actually used the entire ancient realm 
to bless you. He said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Read it in your own Bible. But everything happened to ancient Israel so that we could see the patterns and we could learn, amen, what they did. Now watch this now. When they did go into the promised land, the Bible says, eventually they became a kingdom. But the kingdom could not stay together because they refused to follow the patterns of God. In other words, saints, if they did what they were supposed to do, if they sacrificed like how they were supposed to sacrifice, if they did their grain offerings like how they were supposed to do it, if they repented like how they were supposed to do it, anytime they followed the heavenly pattern, their enemies were subdued. They had peace in the land. They had all kinds of amen prosperity in the land. But the moment they deviated and went to the evil patterns, the moment they deviated and started to mix the world into their kingdom was the moment that the kingdom was crushed. I wish I had a witness. So God cares about how we demonstrate our knowledge of Christ. How many remember the story of Moses? Amen. Moses, the Bible says, at one point, amen, struck a rock because the people, amen, were thirsty. They were dying of thirst. And he went to God, he said, God, they're dying of thirst. And they said that you brought them out here to die. And so God said, strike the rock, Moses, and water will pour out. And so the Bible says, Moses struck the rock and water poured out. And everybody drank from the water. Amen. They had bread from heaven. They had a shade over their head. They had a pillar of fire by night. But watch this, when Moses struck this rock, amen somebody, he struck the rock and water came out. They carried this rock around with them in the wilderness. Anybody know that? They actually traveled with the rock. Read 1 Corinthians 10. And as they traveled with the rock, every time they were thirsty, they drank from the rock. Can you imagine how good that water must have tasted? You think you taste good spring water, mineral water? This was some good holy water, amen somebody? And so the Bible says that they got to a certain point, amen, where the water stopped pouring. And so Moses went back to God and Moses said, God, the water stopped pouring. The people are getting angry. What am I supposed to do? And so God said, this time, Moses, don't strike it. I want you to speak to the rock. Now Moses went before the people and the people got Moses upset and this I, I want every church leader in this house to hear what I'm about to say Moses let the people get to him Moses let the people's grumbling and murmuring get to him and as a result he struck the rock and when he struck the rock God said Moses I didn't tell you to strike that rock clearly you don't understand the heavenly patterns because the Bible tells us that that rock was Jesus and Jesus would be crucified crucified not two times but one time and so when the rock was struck the first time that was symbolic of his crucifixion but when he struck it the second time that was suggesting to the heavenly realm that Jesus should be crucified two times and that's just not true and as a result Moses lost his way to the promised land as a result he was not allowed to enter because he did the wrong pattern I say this to the leadership in this room don't let the people cause you to lose your promise just serve them just do what you're supposed to do don't worry about if they like you don't worry about if they clap for you don't worry about if they give God a praise when you stand at this pulpit just do what God called you to do don't let them get depressed don't let them make you depressed don't let people because sometimes people will fall asleep in the congregation sometimes they'll give you funny looks in the congregation but you gotta look past the people and just do what God sent you to do that's a tidbit it to every leader you could have that one for free but the point is Moses lost his access to the promised land that's a pretty harsh pun penalty because he suggested that Jesus should be crucified two times I'm talking to you today about finding godly patterns are you with me somebody the Bible tells a story about a man named Uzzah and the Bible says that Uzzah was with King David when they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to the city of David. The Bible says that David designed a new cart. If I could use my imagination a little bit, I believe it was a beautiful cart. I believe that when the cart stopped, the wheels keep spinning. I believe it had spinners. I'm just saying. That's just my imagination. Don't laugh. I'm just imagining. I like to use my godly imagination. But it was a 
fresh cart. Come on, it's King David. The man had taste. And so they got this beautiful cart. It was well constructed. It probably had chrome wheels. Maybe not, Lord. I'm just saying. But the point is they brought the Ark of the Covenant on this cart. And they wheeled this cart. The Bible says when they got to a threshing floor, which is probably one of the smoothest parts of their journey, the Bible says that the cart tipped over and the Ark of the Covenant began to fall. Now there was a man named Uzzah and the Bible says that Uzzah reached out to steady the ark. Now come on somebody, if you was there, you wouldn't try to steady the ark? This is the presence of God, the ark of the covenant. This is where the priests would apply the blood and the Shekinah would show up in the, in the tabernacle. This was supposed to be the mercy seat of God where the presence of God would sit down and this thing was falling off the cart. And the Bible says when Uzzah, who had good intentions, reached out to steady the ark, the Bible says he was killed dead i wish i had a listener up in this house he died why would god kill uza he had good intentions anybody would have reached out and touched it you don't want it to fall but god cares about patterns he cares about what we demonstrate he cares how we live. If Uzzah, because David was confused, David was so confused, the Bible says he sent the ark away. He said, I, I don't know why God would kill Uzzah and I don't want this thing around me right now. But the Bible says David came to his senses and he remembered that the Ark of the Covenant was never supposed to go on a cart. It was supposed to go on poles. It was supposed to be hoisted up and carried on the shoulders of the priests. And they were supposed to walk with it. Amen. Because the pattern that would be demonstrated by the priests is the government would be upon their shoulders. Symbolizing Jesus of which the government is upon his shoulders. I wish I had a witness up in here. There's a pattern that they were supposed to follow now watch this if Uzzah with his good intentions if Uzzah was allowed to catch the ark what he would be saying back into the spiritual realm of God he would be saying that mankind can save God from falling I wish I had a witness up in here uh, somebody's gonna get it you got to read your Bible I pray you get the revelation if he was allowed to catch that ark he was sending a message back into the spiritual realm that says man has the power to save the presence of God from falling and because that was such a lie Uzzah had to die what I want to tell somebody in this house is you might have good intentions and think that what you're doing you're doing by your good intentions but let me tell somebody something in this house good intentions is not good enough God said that we got to live a certain way God said that we got to speak a certain way God said that we got to love a certain way so don't don't approach God with your good intentions. Don't tell God what well, I meant to do it. You got to get in your Bible and figure out what God wants you to do. You got to have a relationship so you could be led by the Holy Ghost. So you can hear what saith the Lord. Good intentions is not good enough. Ah, uh, if only Uzzah read Psalm 91. Then he would have known the angels, amen, would bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. If he knew Psalm 91, he would have leaped backwards and said, nobody touch it. Because angels would have come down from heaven like lightning and caught the ark. I wish I had, a, somebody's getting it. I wish I had a, I wish I had a Bible study student here. I say all this to say this, you need to understand patterns. Now, I like to teach and break it down, but I also like to preach, so hopefully you don't get mad when I start preaching. But the point is, we have to be aware of our heavenly patterns. One thing about Israel that they didn't understand, and I think I, just, I should say this because the Holy Ghost is leading me to say this, is that when they left Egypt, the gold, the silver, and all the trappings of Egypt, they were happy there, but they were slaves there. And when they came into the wilderness, because their minds weren't transformed, they couldn't see the goodness of God in the wilderness. All they saw was the scorpions and the serpents and they saw the desert and the cactuses and whatever is in a desert. But the truth is, and I said it before earlier, there was a pillar of cloud above them. That means that God turned the hot desert into a cool air conditioned place because they had a cloud over them. That means at nighttime when a desert can get deadly cold, you can freeze in a desert no different than you can 
burned to death in a desert. But at nighttime, that same cloud that was above them would turn into a pillar of fire. So they had heat in the midnight hour. They had bread that came from God's kitchen, so they ate the manna that fell from the sky. They had water that came from a rock. Plus, the Bible says not even their clothes was tattered. They were protected. They had to stay under the cloud because God was teaching them to remain one in the body of Christ. It was a pattern. So they could not leave the cloud because if they left the cloud, amen, they would die. But the point that I want to make to somebody is that if they had a transformed mind, they would realize that God turned a dry place into an oasis. I wish I had a witness. He turned a dry place into a portable spa, but they couldn't see it because their minds were not yet transformed. I don't know who needed to hear this, but somebody is going through a wilderness and all you're looking at is your problems. All you're looking at is who's saying what and who's doing what. But the truth is you don't understand. You're under the covering of a most high God. I pray today that God open your eyes so you can see that you are blessed. I wish I had a witness in here. I pray that God open your eyes so you can see his protective mercy. So you can see his provision. His provision. So you can see that he goes before you. He goes after you. He's all around you. He's above you. I wish somebody could see it because somebody is only focusing on the bad things that's happening in your life. But God sent me to tell you, open your eyes because God is with you. He's the reason why you haven't lost your mind yet. He's the reason why you haven't died yet because some of y'all, if you're going to admit it, you should have been dead. I wish I had a witness up in here. Some of y'all, you should have lost your mind. Some of y'all, you could have been strung out in a hospital bed or on the mental ward of a hospital but the reason why you're here is because God kept you I wish I had some people who God has kept that would open up their mouth and give God a pray oh I feel something in this house I feel something in this house glory be to God now 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 now, now sit down I, I promise you this time I'm almost done I promise you I know I lied a couple of times Lord forgive me this is the Holy Ghost keep pushing me further. So we must be aware of future patterns. Jesus will come back to fulfill the patterns we demonstrate. Why do you think he told them, I'm the bread of life? Why do you think he told the woman at the well, I will give you water, drink from me? He came to fulfill every sign of himself. I wish I had a witness. So when he came, he kept telling them, if you really read your Bible, you would understand who I am because everything that you've been demonstrating, I am fulfilling it right now in your presence. He even said, just as the bronze serpent was lifted in the wilderness, so the son of man should be lifted up. He kept showing them that I am fulfilling the patterns that you've been demonstrating. But the problem is, if you're religious, you'll never see Jesus. I wish I had some non-religious folk up in here. If you're religious and you're worried about what day you go to church you're worried about amen what suit you wear you're worried about all kinds of frivolous things that really don't matter if you're religious you're gonna miss Jesus because the Pharisees were religious and they had the Almighty God the fulfillment of the Torah the fulfillment of the entire Old Testament was standing in their face and they did not recognize him because religion will blind you from Christ I wish I had a witness. And so there are future patterns that we must observe. Some future patterns I want to point your attention to is when Jesus ascended back into heaven, he rose. He rose so glorious that they looked up and they were staring in the air. And the angel said, relax, the same way he went up, he's going to come down again. Amen. The first time he comes down, I'll be in the air. And those that are dead will rise first. And then those that remain will be caught up to meet them in the air. I wish I had a witness up in here. So many people debate whether there's going to be a rapture or not. I believe there's going to be a rapture. I believe there has to be a rapture. I don't have time to break it all down today. Maybe David, uh, Pastor Lynn will bring me in another time. Amen. But I believe there will be a rapture. Amen, somebody. I know this for sure because people are divided over this. I know this for sure. Whether there's a rapture or not, and I believe there's going to be a rapture, but whether there is or not, we will not be harmed in a tribulation. How do I know this? 
well study the types of christ the bible will show you types of christ's noah was a type of christ he built a vessel to save souls that was a type of the body of christ see the pattern there and so souls if they wanted to be saved they had to be in the vessel amen you couldn't be outside talking about uh, yes i i heard about this ark you had to go in to the ark just like we have to be baptized into the body of christ in order to be saved that's why i'm saying you need a revelation of jesus christ i wish i had a witness here and so noah built this vessel amen to save souls but guess what noah and his wife were safe in that tribulation i look at joseph who's also a type of christ there was a tribulation of the famine and guess what when the famine came joseph and his wife were safe in the famine i look at moses another type of christ and when they went through the tribulations in egypt guess what moses and his wife were safe in the tribulation so all i'm trying to tell somebody is whether we get raptured or not and i believe we will get raptured but whether that happens all i can say for sure is that we will not get touched in any tribulation because god jesus will not suffer his bride to be harmed in no tribulation i just told you that the rock gets struck once not twice so the body of christ was already struck on the cross so he ain't trying to strike his body again i wonder if anybody is is getting the patterns that I'm showing you in this house and so the Bible says he ascended that means he rose we got to follow that pattern there are certain situations in life that might get you down but you got to rise there are certain situations that you might go through that come to crush you but you got to rise because we are demonstrating the pattern of Jesus we're showing God that we know how to demonstrate our knowledge of the Savior I wish I had a witness up in here we must rise because he rose so anytime you find yourself being crushed by a circumstance or a situation I just want to encourage you today to follow the pattern be determined you got the Holy Ghost be determined to rise up out of your situation I don't care how bad it is be determined to rise I wish I had some risers up in this house be determined to rise above your circumstance oh my god another pattern I want to bring to your attention is that when we go to be with God we are going to be at the marriage supper of the lamb that means while there's tribulation breaking out on earth we're gonna be celebrating so if you understand that pattern then you ought to start celebrating right now because the world is in a mess right now but you ought to celebrate in this house don't get depressed when you find out that the enemy is trying to shut down the church but instead open up your mouth and give God a praise I wish I had a witness I'm almost done up in this church let me tell you one more pattern that I want you to pay attention to and I pray that the Holy Ghost show you some more patterns but another pattern that we got to pay attention to is when Jesus comes back with all the angels and the saints he's gonna come and defeat the enemy so somebody in this house if you get what I'm saying you got to defeat the enemy now whatever it is that trouble you you got to defeat it now I wish I had a witness up in this house I come to tell somebody that God sent me to tell you that there are patterns that you gotta learn I pray church that the Holy Ghost will allow you to get the revelation so that you yourself will see the patterns of God I need somebody in this house who's going through trial and tribulation maybe you just lost your job maybe you got a bad doctor's report maybe I don't know what the situation is but whatever it is remember that the preacher told you that you got to rise you got to rise don't let it hold you down but increase your faith in Jesus you gotta rise even when the people around you are trying to stomp out your life just like the sister testified how you had to turn your back I don't know what your family did but I hear the spirit saying sister you gotta rise you gotta rise like Jesus rose nothing can hold you down because the 
Bible says uh, that he's higher than higher. Uh, and if we are the body of Christ uh, and you got the revelation, uh, then you know that the enemy is under your feet. Uh, I wish I had some risers uh, that would stomp the enemy where you stand. Uh, just stomp your feet on the ground uh, to let the enemy know uh, that I am above you. Uh, you will never get me down because uh, I got to rise. Uh, I got to rise up. I wish I had a witness when you go to the doctor and the doctor thinks you should be crying instead of showing the doctor tears. Lift up your hand and say, For God I live and for God I die. And give God a praise and confuse the doctor. That's how you rise, somebody. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody in this house, you got to get the patterns and rise up above your circumstance also church you know the world is going crazy you know that darkness is everywhere but the bible says let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works they'll give god a praise it's getting dark out here but guess what church the darker it gets is the brighter the light shine so go out there and go and let your light shine and go out there and when you hear somebody depressed say glory be to God say God can raise you God can save you I wish I had a witness up in this house every time church I hear a bad report I don't get depressed but I celebrate because I know my patterns so I celebrate when I heard they're gonna take out the Bibles I said glory be to God when I heard that they're trying to shut the church down I said to God be the glory I celebrate because I understand my pattern I celebrate church because I know that my God he's a faithful God he's the same yesterday today and forevermore he's the same God that part the red sea he's the same God that bring dead back to life he's the same God that caused the blind to see he's the same God that caused the lame to walk he's the same God that caused the deaf to hear again he is God I wish I had a witness up in this house somebody take a quick second and give God a high praise listen 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 one more thing before I get out of here I said it before and I'll say it again when Jesus comes back he's coming back to defeat the enemy well some of you got to follow the same pattern because you got some enemies that are messing with you some of you in this house you're struggling with lust some of you in this house you're struggling with anger some of you in this house you're struggling with jealousy some of you in this house you struggle with doubt some of you in this house you struggle with unbelief but God sent me to tell you you got to defeat the enemy because you got the Holy Ghost you don't have to suffer but you have what it takes to defeat the enemy that enemy that's been bothering you you got to declare in the Korea you wicked spirit you've been troubling me for too long you depression spirit you got to get off me you spirit of heaviness you got to get off me you spirits you got to leave me you could win right now because the Bible shares that we already got the victory I wish I had a victorious church that will decide in their mind I got the victory I'm not gonna struggle no more I'm not gonna stay down no more I'm gonna celebrate because I got Jesus I'm gonna celebrate because I got the Spirit of God I'm going to rise and I'm gonna defeat the enemy every demon I put you on notice and you can't come near the children of the Most High God because we understand that he's our strong tower he is our refuge he is our fortress he is our hiding place he is the secret place of the Most High that allows us to abide under the shadow of the Almighty I wish I had a witness Holy Ghost 
move through this house. Holy Ghost, open up their understanding. Holy Ghost, open up their spiritual mind. Holy Ghost, open up their spiritual eyes. Holy Ghost, open up their spiritual hearing. Let them receive the revelation of Christ so they can live victorious. I come to tell somebody, I don't come here to bow, but I come here to stand in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to go out there and demonstrate my Lord. I don't care what comes. I don't care what fiery furnace. They want to heat up for me because God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will go with you. I'll go with you in the fire. I'll go with you in the storm. I wish I had a believer who will open up their mouth and give God a final praise. Come on, praise him in this house. Praise him in this house. Praise him in this house. Praise. Let everything that have breath give God a praise. Praise him in this house. Lift him up. He's worthy. He's worthy. You are worthy, God. We love you. 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 Oh my God, I feel the anointing. I feel the power of God. I feel the healing power of God. I heal, I feel the prophetic power of God. I wish I had a witness up in this house. I bless this ministry. I bless the shepherd of this assembly. I bless Pastor Lena. I bless every evangelist. I bless every pastor. I bless even the apostles that God is raising up. I bless the prophets. I bless the teachers. I bless the children. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, I bless you. 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 Turn to somebody you don't know and say, God bless you. Say, God bless you. Because we are the church. We are a blessed body. We're all together. We're all connected. That means your battle is my battle. That means your problem is my problem. That means your victory is my victory. That means my victory is your victory. Because we are all one in the body of Christ. So let's open up our mouth and collectively give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Just remain standing for a moment. Amen, saints of God. So I pray that the Holy Spirit really open your understanding concerning the patterns. Recognize that Israel was not free from Egypt to just do what they want to do. They weren't free to run around. Amen, somebody. But they had to follow God. We have to be led by the Holy Ghost. We have to follow God and demonstrate the future patterns that he will come back to fulfill. So that when people see how we live, you're in a workplace, they said they're going to lay off. You're the one saying hallelujah. Because you rise up. You have certain demons trying to take you. You say no, not, not today, not ever. You learn that we can suffer the flesh. One of the greatest patterns you can do. And I feel led to say this because someone in the room is struggling. One of the greatest patterns you can fulfill is to suffer your flesh. Nobody suffered like Jesus Christ. I thank God that he can relate to us and we can relate to him. Because the Bible says he stood in the garden of Gethsemane and he was fretting about going to the cross. Because he knew when he took on the sins of every one of us that he'd be separated from God. He was fulfilling the pattern of Adam who was separated from God because of sin. And so he knew he had to fulfill that pattern. The difference between Adam and Jesus is Adam did it through disobedience, but Jesus did it through obedience. So now he goes to the, to the garden and the Bible says his pores dilated and he had a condition that doctors describe as hemohydrosis. He sweat clumps of blood. The agony of knowing he was going to go to the cross to be brutally crucified and even worse, separated from God. 
But the Bible says he caught himself and said, nevertheless, thy will be done. And he went to the cross for me and you. I say this because somebody in the room is struggling. And it's hard for you to let go of what you're holding on to. But remember, one of the greatest patterns you could live is to suffer your flesh. Are you experiencing nails in your hands? Are you experiencing nails in your feet? So what is it to you to say, stop smoking that thing? Stop drinking that thing? What is it to you to say, stop looking at porn? Yes, your body is going to say, but I want to. But you must learn that one of the greatest patterns is suffering the flesh. Telling your flesh, no. I don't care what you want. Call that man and say, I can't see you no more. Call that woman and say, you ain't my wife. It's over. I wish I had a witness up in here. I know the spirit of God don't lie. Someone in this house has been struggling and I need you to approach this altar so we could pray with you. Just come. Can I get some altar workers? I know the Spirit of God don't lie. The Spirit of God don't lie. Someone's struggling in this house. Don't be ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed. You're in a safe place to admit that I'm struggling. Come. Come. Come, come, come to this altar. The Holy Spirit is here and your freedom is here. You don't have to struggle anymore. You don't got to feel inadequate anymore. God loves you. He's seen everything you would do and he still chose you. What a loving God. You're struggling with sin. Make room at this altar. Just make room for the folks to come right up. Come right up. only one name there is only one name with power to save with power to save